dude. What? How you doing, buddy? Yes. Sorry yeah. about that. Uh, my makeshift tripod. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm using my GoPro. My camera lens is too. My big camera. The lens is too big to film in here. Yeah. So it would just look weird. So I'm just gonna use my GoPro, man. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever works. So so good to see you back on YouTube, man. Yeah, thanks. It's been uh, it was a little three month gap or whatever, but doing it now. Yes, dude. On. Yeah, those last videos, I was like on the floor, <laughs> like the 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 something is going on with Parker, and yeah. I think you like nailed it on the head, like better yeah. than yeah. I called it out when he did that like rap video or whatever. Oh my god. After that, it just snowballed into like something way bigger, and I was gonna make a video about like roasting him and like how crazy he's been, but dude, I don't know, like he just needs help more than anything. I tried to give him another shot uh, the other day with his Tesla's videos. Yeah, and it's you're so right because something is really wrong. Like he's babbling, like he's running over his words. He can't keep a consistent set. Like it's just. So it's really hard and sad to see, you know what I mean? I, so yeah, that's why that's why I'm probably not gonna make a video on him like roasting him just because like I don't know the guy just needs help. He doesn't need people bashing him anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, <laughs> he, I think he did it himself. Roast yeah. like doing the whole like roasting DDE thing and like like dude and DDE handled that like beautifully. Like no yeah, res big response. You know what I mean? Like. And he's just never said anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say congratulations on meeting DDE, man. That's a huge yeah. accomplishment. So, like, tell me all about it. So, like, uh, well, so I've met them twice. Once was when I was when I lived in Colorado. They were going to be at the Ferrari dealership there. Right. And I lived probably about two hours away. And me and my friend decided to go drive down there for the weekend and. I mean, I honestly had like never really seen any of their videos or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to check out their car because like I saw the pictures of the blue camo Huracan. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. We went there and they were showing off the car, like talking to everybody. And I, like I said what's up to him, but I really didn't like say anything because I didn't know anything about him. Right. And so I, I technically like met them there the first time. But then a couple weekend or I guess probably a couple months ago now, they... I saw that they were in Scottsdale and exactly where they were staying so oh. right where I used to work. And so I had a day off and I just, I knew what hotel they were at. So I was like, Oh, I'll just see if I can go drive and just check out the cars. Like, that'd be cool. Got nothing better to do. And I found the restaurant that they were parked out in front of. Nice. So I hop out and like, nobody's there. It's completely empty. Just like four supercars sitting there. It was really cool. And I'm walking up and, an Uber pulls up and it's Dave. And <laughs> I was like, he like looked over at me and then got in his car and started the car and then he got back out of his car and he's like, oh, you're the guy that made that video on Houston. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he remembered and, that. Oh yeah. Like, wow. Like, him and Damon both like were joking about it nonstop. It was pretty cool. But we like talked for a little bit and then he went and picked uh, Damon up and drove back and then I met this kid there that happened to be standing there as well that knows them. And I guess he's like a junior Olympic figure skater or something like that. But Whoa. he's had, he had a ton of cars. What? He pulled up in an M3. And so he rode with all of us and we all drove to like, I drove like halfway to California. I probably Holy. rode like 45 minutes and then pulled off in the gas station and just turned around. I never got to see the Huracan. So like, when he was here in Toronto, he had the Mercy, and Dave just got the Squadra, but, like, when Damon was leaving the second day, he was, like, I don't know if he saw it in the DDE video, he was, like, uh, so I got him taken off, but my buddy got him down further, and he was, like, completely sideways going onto the highway. <laughs> <laughs> So badass. Yeah, dude, but yeah, it was pretty cool, man. So I'm so happy for you got to finally meet, like, meet them, as, like, and fully hang out with them, like. Yeah, it was pretty cool, and 
Like, we didn't, honestly, we only talked for probably, like, 20 minutes, and then... Still, though, man. Yeah. To have them, like, remember your video, like, that's pretty big accomplishment, like... Yeah, it was cool, and, like, they gave me a lot of good advice, like, just post as consistent as possible, obviously, like... I used to do that when I first started. There's a lot of videos that I have on private just because they're like old car show videos. I'll probably unprivate them. You should, like, man. Uh, but there's some that like I have privated that when I was posting consistently got me a little bit of a following. And they were the totally like wrong videos that you want to have blow up. Oh. So back when I was in college, probably like 2000. I don't even know. Probably three or four years ago. Right. We found out, me and my friend found out that you could, like, you know when you upload a video with a copyright song, like, now it blocks it immediately? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, back in the day, like, YouTube didn't have all of that software, and so you could just post whatever you wanted, and you could be monetized right off the bat. What? And so, yeah, we, we were trying to figure out how to get a following. We were doing the car show thing. Not many people were following us, and then we... We're like, okay, well, let's just try something like that might get a lot of views. And at that time, it was it was the election of Donald Trump. Oh my gosh! And so <laughs> I don't know how you lived through that, man. Like, it was horrible. I, I was in college, and like my my school was like very like it was pl- pretty much split down the middle of like people who liked him and people who hated him. So it was a horrible environment to be in. Oh my but anyway, god! But the election was going on, and we took a video, like literally from my cell phone, was streaming the election results on my laptop, like live. And uh, I recorded a bit that said like, you know, when they announced it, like, like, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump is now the president, like after the last states came in and they really like truly announced it. Oh my God. He's probably like, it was later at night, like probably like nine or 10, maybe even a little later when they called it. And I literally like live, I filmed it threw it up on my YouTube channel like Donald Trump wins the election and then didn't put any thumbnail like just straight up uploaded it and when I woke up it had like 180,000 views oh my god literally like four hours like (gasps) I went to bed and I had to get up early for baseball practice and when I got up it had like probably around like 180,000 views and it just kept going and going and my subscriber count went from like 150 to like 800 overnight and so the first like chunk of people who subscribed to me right they subscribed for car content they subscribed off of that donald trump video <sighs> and so like my engagement was still super super low so right. even like when i first started out that's why i privated those videos is because like i blew up on those videos but right. I, I attracted like the crowd i did not want at oh all. no <laughs> like Oh. Just a bunch of like politics and stuff, so that's why I kept those videos private, just to like get, keep people off of it. Yeah, I I try to in my videos, I try to like not talk, like I try to keep political, religion, and stuff like that. Like lately on my Instagram, there's been a, like a lot of like people going back and forth and like arguing with each other over cars, and, and I'm like, so I'll take that post and take it right off because I'm yeah. like look this is about positivity like i started my page my instagram to promote my youtube but also to like inspire other people that have been in accidents like mine that yeah there's life after having an accident and becoming disabled there's life after that like keep my page a positive place and i get i get that people want to debate cars like i get that but like, try to do it without the trolling, and I'm I, so with you there. I'm That's so I to do. yeah. I'm I'm just, like, like, I like to roast people, and I like to like. I really don't care what people comment, but I will like. I will definitely delete some comments if they're like bad. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, like no hate, like no hate, yeah. no racism, like the, anything like that. But like your your videos, like you're you're roasting, but it's it's in good fun like it's it's not like you're hating it's not like oh parker's this and that and houston's mm-hmm. this and that no you, like in the houston dde video you presented the facts and it just swayed towards uh Dana. yeah <laughs> yeah like if you watch i i still watch royalty 
exotics or whatever. Because I like obviously yeah, want. Lately, lately, it's been awesome. You know, like just share with what you have. I would like to hear more about his story. Mm-hmm. So when I was talk, yeah, when I was talking with Steve's POV when I did his interview, it was more we were talking more about like the story of people's, uh, of, of how people were got, got where they are, like. T- like how Steve learned Japanese and like moving to Japan and working on a chicken farm and like That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? Like think about how hard that is to learn Japanese. Yeah. So like when you have a story, like I think instead of like boasting about what you have right there at, and then and telling the story of how you got there is uh precipitates more over what you have. You know what I mean? Like like, it's funny, like, my accident story video, at the end, I put, like, a Murcielago cold start, and there was a great story of that Murcielago, because I saw it when I first uh, started filming, but a fire truck pulled up right in front of it, and I'm like, mm-hmm. no, and it, like, followed it, so I, like, blocked my shot, yeah, and then finally, I finally got to film it. That's awesome. But I put it in the video with my accident story. And I'm asking people, I'm like, what did you watch more? Like my accident story or the Mercy Lago at the end or the two or the A12 super fast and the 458 taking off. They're like, oh, the accident story. Like we didn't even know there was a Mercy Lago at the end. Right. <laughs> right. So that's why I dig what, because you, whether it's roasting or commentating, like you have a story to tell. And that's why I respect your channel is like, you know what I mean? And you do that to the Paulos video. First of all, like that's why I respect Paulos for sure. Like, right, that right. Being different. like I, even though I poke a great deal of fun out of him, like uh, he's works really, really hard. So, oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, like that job is not easy. No, no. He does a really good job. But I, I respect what he's doing now with uh, giving smaller YouTubers a chance. But I think he should give. I'm not saying me, but like people who are like, I found a bunch of great YouTube channels that are under a thousand, excuse me, subscribers that have great content and great editing. And those, that's who needs to be spoken about. Like, I agree. Like a lot of these people who like, there are a lot of people that are really, really, really good, but they is so hard to hit a thousand subscribers. The only reason I say that is that's when you unlock the ability to like, essentially get some money for <laughs> yeah it, right right and i think it's called out like the smallest of people like people that are like i mean who knows maybe do like every friday you go over like five people who you know deserve a shout out that could boost them so high like right. you're giving the people ability to like potentially make this their career like even faster which is cool like i i think that's how his platform should be used and yes start really talking about uh your trip to canada man i can't wait like for you to come up here yeah me and one of my friends uh from high school he lives in oregon and he's like we need to do a trip because i haven't seen him in probably like three or four years we still talk a lot right i was like yeah sure like you know where do you want to go and said like a bunch of places but then canada popped up and i was like oh wait we could like Go there for a cool trip and do a bunch of cool stuff. <laughs> well, so I'm yeah. in Toronto though. Like I'm on the east, so I'm like mm-hmm. nine hours from New York. But what I was thinking is, so because I would love to go home and see my mom, and because uh, the last time she saw me, I was in my in the hospital in my wheelchair, like half dead, and like so I'd love to go see her. If and if your friend lives in Oregon, so you should. I was thinking we could meet up in the middle, like you could come up to Vancouver and then you could see where like DDE's from and like check out their car scene. But you're always more than welcome to come to Toronto, man. Like yeah. Toronto, well, up. we're getting yeah. some like insane cars. Like from what I've been told in the community so far from certain owners, we're getting some like crazy, crazy, crazy cars coming out. Like. We're getting a few more Paganis, like, yeah, like think yeah. about this, like, yeah, your car scene is crazy. 
<laughs> well, like, think about we'll get there. I would have thought that like it would have at least toned down a little bit, but no way, dude. Like, I'm telling you, like the first month I started filming is when I saw that cheer on. So that guy's really cool, by the way. His name's the Happy Hippie. He's got a car collection of the ages, by the way. So he's like this hippie dude. Follow him on Instagram, Happy Hippie. That Chiron's, first of all, it's exposed red carbon. It's like one of the first, and it's the first one in Canada. Dude, think about this. When I saw that driving through, I don't know if you've seen that clip of it driving through, but that was the first month of my channel. Yeah, and, that's yeah. crazy. And I was like getting ready to pack up for the night. Like I was like, oh, I'm sore. I just want to go home. And I was putting away my camera and I look up, boom, the lights of a Chiron. And I'm like, what? And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. It was like, and then yeah. the next day, boom, like the first La Ferrari on my channel. Yeah. And he drove I by twice. Like, I don't, I don't think I, I think the first time I ever saw Bugatti in person was in Scottsdale. Like I've seen a lot of them in Scottsdale, only at car shows, never like driving around. Right. That's not very normal, but no. uh, definitely seen them at car shows. I've seen a handful of Senna's here. Uh, yeah. I, I saw LaFerrari driving around. It was pretty cool. I mean, you see a ton of Ferraris. You see a bunch of Huracans. You see a lot of 570s, a lot of 720s too. Nice, here. nice. But that's really about it. There's, I mean, there's like muscle cars. Like the the worst car scene aside from Nebraska, like place wise that I've lived in, um, is Colorado. Colorado is compared to Arizona sucks. It's all muscle cars, right? It's muscle cars, but like, I don't know. Like, like I dig muscle cars, but like, I saw a channel the other day. I'm not going to mention its name, but in the name, it said something, something supercars. And I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. It's all supercars. It's, they're all supercars in the title or what in the opener or whatever. And I'm watching it, and it was like a half an hour straight of Mustangs and Hellcats and Chargers taking off. And there was like one 458, one Adventador, a sick SV, Adventador SV, and then like a couple Huracans. And I'm, I don't know, I just find it funny that when you have a channel that says supercars, like I don't yeah. associate <laughs> Mustangs peeling out, you know what I mean? I can see that just not even filming. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing like, with the Colorado shows, I'd say when I first started, for sure, when I first started, maybe two to five supercars at right. a show. Probably like a good couple months. I, I don't know if it was because it was new, but I remember the first show we went to, the only exotic car was a uh, 458 Speciale, oh. which is real cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. But there was like a Lamborghini Diablo, and then the rest of the stuff is like modded cars, and all of that. Oh. But then by the end, and even now, it's getting a lot better. There's, right. I mean, you saw, I think the Stradman had a video of the Senna, that orange carbon fiber Senna. Oh, yes, yeah. The guy lives in Colorado. I've seen his cars. He's got sick. a 675 LT that matches his Senna. It's so what? sick. Dude. Yeah, like he's got a lot of, his garage is insane. But yeah, I think. Their car scene now is getting a little better, but good, good. Cause you can't touch Arizona's. It's so good. Dude. Really, it's, it's it's just crazy. Like, I need to come there too. Like, dude, I yeah, you need to come to Toronto. It, it's sick uh -huh, for sure. Yeah, and like the music here scene is sick. The music scene here is pretty sick too. Like, especially when you have like Drake just like rolling around, like in his Manzuri Rolls Royce. That's my biggest video yet. That dude, yeah, my my dream car. Like, I would not want to own. I mean, of course, I would want to own a Lambo and a Ferrari. But like, if I had the money to buy like a supercar yeah. or what a nice ass car, Rolls <laughs> <laughs> Royce for sure. Like, even if it was a ghost, like I would daily drive that over a Lamborghini or any of those any day. Like, those are my favorite by. But that Rolls Royce is unreal. So it's the only Manzuri, fully kitted Manzuri Rolls Royce. And we just spotted it by chance. Yeah. Like, that, rip by. I was like, 
world is amazing. It's so big. It is so freaking huge, dude. Oh, it's a Phantom 8. Yeah. Yeah, we saw it, and we were just like, whole, like, it came by, and we saw it, and then it came back around, and then it, uh, and then it, like, did a couple different loops, and then we were, uh, we were leaving... And we saw these like four big biker dudes in front of this watch store. And the guy that owns the watch store, if you see my videos, there's a black Veyron that I filmed. It's his. And he's got a car collection like you wouldn't believe. Like La Ferrari, La Ferrari Aperta, blue TDF. Like insane. But, and we're like, well, that's weird. What are these big, huge biker dudes doing? All right. Yeah. And then we turn the corner. And like, boom, there, there's Drake's Rolls Royce. And we're like, what? And it was funny because the driver kept trying to flash his lights so that it would mess up our shot. Do you understand? Like he was trying to screw up our shots of it. So all we did is just like, well, I don't know if you call what I do walking, but I crutched it behind and just took a shot from it behind. <laughs> Stupid. And then I went to like the intersection and I just like, held my camera like pointed like this so i filmed him walking from the watch store all the way to his car the funniest <laughs> part was is like these two fangirls came tearing over and they're like can we see what you film can we see what you film blah, 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 blah. And, like freaking out i'm like it's he's just walking to his car like yeah. you were closer yeah. to him than i was like <laughs> yeah dude so and then it pulled away and then, uh, yeah, it was pretty sick. That Rolls Royce is un like, like unbelievable. And I don't know if you've seen, look it up online after, but it's got a special, it doesn't have a spirit of ecstasy. Oh, really? Yeah, he's got a crystal owl. Oh. Yeah, oh. he's got like, so it, it says, he had it down when I filmed it, but like, um, I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's a Swarovski crystal owl that he had specially made. Yeah, and yeah. it pops up and down. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, that was pretty sick, dude. So. That's crazy. Yeah. Toronto's got a sick scene, man. And then, obviously, we won NBA championships. And then. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So, um, uh, do you have any more questions or anything? Or because we, it's kind of getting, we've been going for, like. <laughs> That was like an hour. I think we're at, yeah, we're at like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. All but, right, I got two more, but you can no. answer them both. Or I guess they're kind of in the same question. Yeah, so, far away, man, far away. What, what is your favorite car, but also what is your favorite brand of car? So, oh my. It, you know, you love the Gallardo, but you're a Ferrari person. What What is your two? Okay. I'll break it down like this because people ask me this all the time and I talked about this with Steve's POV. My realistic garage goal with my channel, I want to do a wide body super Legera twin turbo. If, if I ever were to break that thousand subscriber mark and like stuff took off for me or, or, uh, a Mercia Lago, uh, LP 640, doesn't matter pre or after LP 640, but I would love a Ferrari Challenge Stradale. I cool. Yeah, I want to be the first guy to like have a wide body uh, <laughs> Challenge Stradale just to mess with people. Like, like that's so sick. Yeah, right? And then, um, but so... I don't, I, it's so hard to have, like my dream car for me, uh, Adventador SV all day long. Yeah. Yeah. It's people are like, Oh, I love the Adventador. I love the SVJ or sorry. Well, yeah. see, it's so hard to say because I love the SVJ, but I love the SV, like just the looks. I wish the looks of the sv were the looks of it had the uh svj components to it do you understand like the center x exhaust so that's like my realistic garage goal is an sv super light super fast uh but then 
for favorite brand, I, I, it's so hard to say because I was talking about it with the guy that led me into the Ferrari collection and I was standing in front of a $20 million <laughs> 250 LM yeah. and we were talking about, it. and, and then like, and then he sh brought me over to the last Ferrari TDF off the line. Like d that's unreal. And it was signed by the heads of Ferrari. And I'm thinking to myself, I love Lamborghini, but Ferrari has the pedigree, the race pedigree, the history, and nothing is built like a Ferrari. And so basically if I had my dream garage goal, let's say one hypercar, uh, one like say uh, exotic, like super exotic, rare exotic, and then like a daily, I would be La Ferrari any day. Like I love Bugatti, but uh, La Ferrari all day long. Uh, Cause of the pedigree, <sighs> but it's hard to say, but yeah, so La Ferrari, TDF, and an SV. That table over to you, like what would be, your, what's, I know Rolls Royce, obviously. So, yeah, brand wise, it'd probably be a Rolls Royce. And then if I had to pick the three cars, like hypercar, supercar, and daily, my daily, honestly, I'd like the. I like the Wraith, but I would probably have a Ghost over a Wraith just with four doors. Like, right. having a coupe is is a bitch, especially if you want to have people in your car a lot. Like, moving the seats back and forth, like, I'm saying, I ain't about that anymore. <laughs> so, right. I'd probably get a Ghost, but it would be like, all matte black with a white interior. Oh, it'd, I'll, it'd be murdered out. I'll send you a photo of a Toronto's got the only murdered out ghost. I'll, I'll yeah. send you pictures of it. Yeah, that'd be like goals right there. Oh. That'd be sick. And then for supercar, probably a FF. Yeah. Be all wheel drive. I would be cool with that. Like that's been my favorite car for a long time. And then hypercar wise, you know, I don't know, probably like a Pagani. Yeah. Pagani, I don't care which one you want to get. Have you seen <laughs> one up close yet? Yeah, yeah, I've only seen one in my whole life. I've wow. never seen Koenig's egg. I've seen pretty much everything else. Right. And uh, when I saw my first Pagani, it was my first car show I ever went to in Scottsdale. And, uh -huh. and the, the car shows are so big that like, and there's so many cars that right. if you want to find where all the really cool cars are, just look up at where the people are. Like if there's a huge crowd of people in yeah. one like little alleyway, go walk over near it. And that's what I learned pretty quick. And I walked over and I saw the wheel and then I saw like the back end and uh -huh. it was all red carbon fiber. Uh -huh. It was the Wyra Roadster. Oh, that's was, what I filmed. That's so funny. It was so cool, and and I I think that video is on private, but I'll in private all those videos. Yeah, do that, and so people can watch them. But there there's a there was a Pagani Roadster, a white Roadster, and it was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Like the amount, it was literally like artwork. Like it it pained me to watch it drive on the road because I know like how perfect that car is. Like like the carbon sweet. fiber lines up. Yeah, like, like it I, scared me to even drive that thing. Like it was so freaking beautiful. Dude, it's so funny. Your first Pagani is a wire roadster, so is mine. And yeah, they're both yeah. Uh, well, that's my only Pagani. I've never seen another one. Oh I've, yeah, no me neither. Yeah, but oh, can I, 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 I've never seen a Sharon either. Oh. Eventually, I will. I'm sure. See, people, I have this debate with people, and I had this debate with this guy when I saw the Rosso Fioco La Ferrari. I've okay, so I saw that Chiron driving, and then like a couple months later, I got to be up close to it, and met the owner, and he also brought his exposed carbon P1. So he owns the first ever customer P1. So oh, the, nice. yeah, it's that green one you see in my video. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, and he, I, he also just bought the first customer owned Senna. Jeez. You bought it at auction, so uh, hopefully that's coming up to Toronto. It's in Florida right now, but um, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Chiron, dude. It's it's gorgeous, but it's a it's a grand tour. It's 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 heavy. It's um, 
It's obviously overpowered, but that's sick, obviously. But what people don't realize is a Bugatti, like, it's an $80,000 oil change. And they demand you do it every year. So every time you service your Bugatti, it's a hundred and like sixty grand yep. to have an oil change and your car service. That's re even like with a Veyron, it's still that much money to have it serviced. So like I would love to and a Ferrari, just the lines of a La Ferrari, it's just so sexy and like they're really cool. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I'll never forget that day I saw that the Rosso Foco one. Like, I'm still in shock. Like, that I got to see that Rosso. Like, yeah, I forget the color. The first La Ferrari I ever saw is in my mind. Like, when I when when I first started, I should say, like the only pictures I've ever seen of a La Ferrari is either red or yellow. Right. And like, I've never seen any like. I mean, now I obviously have seen plenty of different colors, but like at that time, like I didn't know like what colors they came in, and I was just like, "Oh, I'll never see one," so I'm not even gonna really pay attention to it. Then we went to this Ferrari event in Colorado, and there was one that was like this dark navy blue, oh. and it was it was so cool, and I didn't even recognize it at first because it just blends right in when it's like that dark color, but oh, like. That that was so so nice, and the interior was tan. Like, it was so beautiful. Did it have gold wheels? No, no, it had a uh, it had silver wheels. Why have I think I've seen that La Ferrari before? I think it was when we talked to the owner. I have a friend that talked to the owner. He said it was a one of two in that car. I also have to let me. I want to change up one thing. So if I couldn't find a TDF. My second car would be an N Largo Novatech A12 or F12. Just okay. cause, yeah, Thanks. they <laughs> are so sick. There's only 12 in the whole world. They're huge. They're way, they're, they're so wide. It's ridiculous. And the sound yeah. is unreal. Like I've never, we have one in Toronto. I've never seen it yet, but like apparently it's, out of this world like yeah they're, they're, they look so sick like you should uh do you know who producer michael is yeah i yeah i watched that video that yeah it was so cool like when he he's like the whole thing's carbon fiber and he like knocks on the hood and it's just like the weirdest sound ever <laughs> dude that was oh my god they scream those so there's a guy that follows me he's been on shmi his name's dennis Akuin. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him there. Yeah, he owns the first chassis number one F50. He met producer Michael and got to hear that thing in real life. And he said it's just like there's nothing. It's the closest thing you can find to an F1 car in real like. Yeah, like. Yeah, and so, but that 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 Dennis guy, he's the coolest guy on earth. I never thought in a million years like I would have a supporter as big as him. He's my biggest yeah. motivator, supporter, like, and he's, like, got a sick collection. Like, he's got that sick McLaren 720, and then he's got the F50, the chassis number one. But he's also got, like, a 25th anniversary Countach, which are, oh, like, yeah. So, like, he's a connoisseur, and that's, and he's the greatest guy on earth. big camera <laughs> all right man okay so obviously i gotta i gotta get to that film shoot um thank you so much for doing this man long time coming um we need to do this more often and dude thank you for mentoring me man and like teaching me like a lot about youtube and this was yeah. a great conver conversation man i'll release it for saturday all right and uh if you want any of the clips, just let me know. Anything you want to say before going, bro? Ah, uh, no, sorry, I put in some popcorn. That's probably a little loud on the screen. It's uh, okay, no, I'm a huge- Gary's channel on the Spot Exotics. My channel is Mr. Pink, if you want to check it out. Yes, please subscribe uh, to Mr. Pink. Please check out his channel. I'll put all the links to his uh, Instagram and channel in the description. Sorry, I interrupted, brother. Keep going. Oh, you're good, man. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it if you actually made it through. 
the whole video, <laughs> leave a comment. Other than that, we'll see you in the next one. Okay, man. Thank you so much, brother. Peace. All right. Later, man.